might react. We're talking currencies now. Uh, Peter Rosenstreich is uh, uh, Chief Market Analyst at ACM, and he joins us now live from Geneva with a view on the currency markets. Peter, good morning to you. Morning. Um, where do we stand exactly? Today's trade appears on the whole to have been a move away from the carry. It's been more emphasis on holding yen than anything else uh, in today's session, so far as I can see. Uh, but I guess, really, the market's now just waiting to this jobs data. Correct, correct. The action that we've seen out of the U.S. market, the close of the U.S. as well as going into the Asian session or going through the Asian session, basically so shows that there's a lot of uncertainty about exactly uh, which way uh, the direction should be pushing. So we're going to see a continued uh, yen strength uh, despite the numbers that came out uh, in terms of leading indicators for the yen. And we're going to see relatively uh, a light trading day going into the U.S. and their um, economic releases. What about this economic release? As we're talking there to a number of strategists, in fact, we've spoken to a lot of people over the last mm -hmm. few days, as, as you know. But, I mean, as we were saying, 100 percent certain we've got 25 basis points on the uh, uh, Fed move on the 18th of, of September. But uh, in, in your mind, Mind, is this number today enough to sway the view of the Fed and, and, and the dollar? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think it's, a, you know, uh, an absolute certainty if, if this number, uh, non-farm payrolls, comes in uh, much lower than expected that, that automatically guarantees a Fed cut. There's a lot of data points that are coming out uh, between now and the 18th that could direct the Fed or, or change their mind. Remember, you had a very decent beige book that came out. Um, overall, we've seen growth in the in the economy. You had a Q, uh, Q2 GDP that came out uh, relative, relatively robust. So forward-looking, you know, it's true that the data is going to continue to decline, but we need to see that data first. Um, one uh, trader that we were talking to there yesterday saying that today's number has been the widest spread or expectations for the number has been the widest spread in three months, anything from 35,000 to 140. We got this average of 100. To what degree either side would you be interested in a number which we could move the dollar on? Well, I think, um, you know, the interesting, the, the downside, the, the risk is really to the downside, especially with the ADP uh, report that came out uh, pushing to a much lower figure. So if that number comes out, it will start showing that the, you know, turmoil that we've seen across the credit markets, as well as the slump in the housing market and uh, the layoffs that we've seen um, in uh, the commercial sector is really taking its toll uh, directly uh, on the U.S. consumer, and that's going to play a big part in the Fed's decision on the 18th, and that will uh, continue to weaken the U.S. dollar. Peter, what are you actually expecting the Fed to do on the 18th and thereafter? <laughs> well, you know, I'm still in the, uh, the minority corner that the Fed is going to hold rates. Um, I need to see more data, again, going back to the Beige Book, which is one of the uh, you know, main instruments that the Fed uses to determine uh, monetary policy. Uh, it shows a, an economy that's, yes, slowing, but still uh, somewhat rob robust. And we're not sure that the subprime turmoil is going to go trickle down into the, the really the stronghold of the U.S. economy, which is the consumer. And until we st see that data, uh, we're going to keep uh, uh, rates on hold. So for the moment, you're expecting rates to be left on hold in the U.S. Correct. until the beginning of 08? Um, no, no. I mean, um, we think there's going to be one cut uh, within uh, this year. What's all this going to mean for the uh, other currencies um, outside of the dollar? Where is the dollar most likely to be traded against? Is it continue to be the euro or will it be the Swissy? What's the, the dollar um, currency to look for? Well, yeah, I mean, you're an int right now is a very interesting market. Um, uh, despite the, the – um, well, before the economic indicators come out today, the market's still really trading on risk aversion, and the dollar seems to be, you know, the, you know a positive uh, recipient of, uh, of that. So we believe that in the euro dollar, we'll continue to see uh, slight declines or, you know, in the, and heading down to, the, say, the 134 levels right. in the very, very short term. Okay. Um, Look, Peter, stay with us just a couple of minutes. I know we've got you okay. back in just a moment's time uh, with uh, some more detail on these uh, currency markets. So coming up, have interest rates in Britain now peaked at five and three quarter percent? And if they have, then uh, what should investors be doing about the pound? That's uh, our topic next with our guest. Welcome back to uh, Bloomberg Television. Now, some currency analysts are advising investors to get out of the pound. They argue that the Bank of England's program of interest rate increases has now run its course. Borrowing costs have been jacked up to five and three quarter percent, a sl slower rate of inflation that's been consistently above target. A report today shows the rate increases are now starting to slow down the rate of growth. Let's get uh, another outlook now uh, from our guest, Peter Rosenstreich, who's chief uh, market analyst at ACM. Um, what do you make of uh, what we heard yesterday? 
today from the Bank of England. What does that mean uh, now for uh, moves on the pound? Well, I think right. I think what we saw yesterday was uh, in the comments, the unusual comments after the uh, rate decision, was that the the, the amount of dovishness dovishness in in the uh, BOE uh, really took the market aback. Uh, and despite the fact that the the U.S. economy, excuse me, uh, the British economy is still relatively robust, we're seeing a decline in CPI below, uh, you know, uh, their their target rate. So that's a positive, and basically that a additional hike might be off the table, and that's putting pressure on the cable. Uh, how big a might is that? Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, right now it's, it's really data dependent as well as market turmoil uh, dependent. If we start seeing uh, additional data that would support a rate hike, I think it could come back on the table very, very quickly. Uh, and again, the way the volatility in these markets have sort of popped up its ugly head, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty on how that's going to affect the uh, BOE. Peter, the pound dollar at the moment is above $2. What kind of forecast are you seeing on the cable for the next couple of months? Well, you know, I think, you know, we need to see, uh, I know it sounds like a broken record, but we need to see what the market, you know, uh, environment is, the global financial markets uh, are going to do and how the subprime crisis in the U.S. is going to play out globally. Uh, right now, we see the, the cable really stuck in a relatively tight range um, and really not going anywhere. So what kind of data? Are you waiting for the minutes to come out from the Bank of England? Are you waiting for specific data on consumer inflation? What are you looking out for to well, have a better I mean, picture? Yeah, I mean, the minutes would be, I think, uh, very revealing, as well as, uh, you know, taking an, keeping an eye on CPI and making sure that doesn't go, go above the 2% the target rate. I think that's going to be critical, as well as the additional uh, housing market and seeing how that's, uh, you know, whether it's going to continue uh, overheating or is it going to start cooling off a little bit and relieving the pressure on the BOE. Again, uh, when looking at the pound, uh, is it just against the dollar that we should be concentrating? You've been talking about the, the risks mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, Fed funds and the outlook for the U.S. economy and the dollar as a result, although you should be looking more in detail at the pound uh, against the euro. Well, the euro pound, I think, is very interesting. In the last four days of trading, we've seen the euro get uh, uh, significantly stronger, um, and I think we're going to continue to see that trend. We need a break of, I think, uh, 67.90 uh, to really confirm a reversal uh, of the bearish downside, um, and that's a number, a figure, excuse me, a level that we'll be paying especially uh, close attention to. How long could it get, take to get there, and what's going to push uh, it? We're, we're really getting up there. Um, I mean, today the, we, we saw some a pretty strong move towards that level. Uh, I think it's uh, a lot of it has to do with the change in market sentiment in terms of interest rate differentials, and I think we're right there. Let's take a look, if we can, at the, the, the longer-term picture. Obviously, okay. the, the, the big, de the big um, decisions obviously have to be made when we know more about how deep this subprime issue is. But uh, in, in your mind... Are we at the worst point now, or do you think there really is still something big out there we just haven't seen? Well, a lot of pundits have taken that question and really got bitten in the, in the, the side for that. So <laughs> I'm going to stick my head out and say what I, what I believe is that a lot of the subprime crisis has really been isolated to the U.S., and that's going to help the situation in terms of risk aversion in the longer term. Um, so I think paying specific attention to that aspect means a dollar over the medium and long term are probably going to uh, suffer. Peter, very quickly, in 10 seconds, what are you buying today? Right now, we're in the very, very short term, we think the dollar is going to strengthen uh, due to risk aversion uh, going into the uh, releases, as well as the uh, uh, yen crosses. We think they'll come under a significant pressure. All right. Many th thanks there, Peter. Rosenstrauss.